Hey, bye. Thomas here. Got a pretty interesting episode for you today. I think you'll really enjoy this one because we're going out on a road trip to go meet one of my good buddies in South Carolina. I've been doing a lot of work down here in Mayport, Florida with my job, but I'm down here for pretty much a prolonged period of time and I've got the weekends at my disposal. So I said, let's take a road trip. So left out this morning at 545 from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. And now we're driving up to uh, South Carolina, just north of Lake Murray is where we're going. But uh, very excited to get out here and meet up with my buddy Gary Axon. If you know that name, uh, he's, you've probably seen him on the Timber King owner and users group on Facebook. He's an awesome individual. He came out to one of my sawmill shows a couple years back in Mississippi, one of the bigger ones we had. And we had a lot of great time talking about sawmills. He is in the same camp that I am, that the Timber King 2020 with the diesel is the best sawmill in the market hands down for fully hydraulic sawmill. However, Gary likes to tinker. Gary likes to tinker a lot. So he has modified his Timber King 2020 a decent amount. He already agrees it's the best sawmill on the market like I do, but there are some things you can add to that sawmill to make it even better. So we're gonna go up here, take a look at what he's done. I think you're gonna really enjoy this and also talk about the products that he has that are for sale for people who have Timber King sawmills. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a good one folks made it safely to Chapin South Carolina you can see my little rental car there and I'm out here with my buddy Mr. Gary Axon and he's gonna walk us through the most modified Timber King 2020 that is out there I start through here hopefully make it in about half an hour or so uh, I did get the uh, removable tongue I don't know how many folks are, are aware that that's an option the main thing uh, I got it for was theft pre prevention uh, because I will be doing uh, uh, portable sawmill work. If I get any sketchy sort of area, I'll take the tongue right off. Uh, in order to facilitate that, I added a removable jack as well. It's a good bit more heavy duty than the one that came on the original uh, machine. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I got plenty of lifting power. Um, and also the hitch itself. Yeah. Uh, all of our equipment, all of our trailers, we use uh, pintle hitches. And for anybody that's not familiar with those, they are just so much easier to, to uh, hitch onto. You just need to get close and uh, back into it. None of this uh, fiddling around mm -hmm. drops right in. It's super. I think I might have been the first guy to get Timber King to actually do that. <laughs> uh, they had to research that a little bit. Gives you all the adjustment all. This little deal here is uh, uh, not something you're going to find on any of the Timber King uh, mills but i ordered the machine with the 12 foot extension mm -hmm. and of course uh, very seldom will i be using a 12 foot extension and standard from timber king uh the energy chain would roll to the end here and then just flop down on the ground i didn't much care for that so came up with this little flip over deal and uh it's painted yellow so i don't forget it <laughs> uh, and then uh, try to back the trailer and the reason his chain would go onto the ground and everything is because he does have the added hydraulic hoses and everything. Since he bought the sawmill with the 12 foot extension, it came pre-installed from Timber King. So this right here allows you to cut the full 21 foot length of the, of the uh, sawmill without letting your without, energy chain get on the ground. Without the energy chain uh, flopping on the ground. Because the energy chain, if you don't know that, is $75 a, a foot. So if there's anything that breaks or busts those, that's $75 a foot. That's quite spendy. Yeah. One of the things I got tired of right away was knocking my shins on these, these little levers that were standard. So we knocked those off. It takes a, just a standard bolt find, or a nut, find one that fits properly, made this little crank. And now when I get on a job, we use an electric drill yes. instead to run them up and down. We'll caution people that, you know, don't use the impact on this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, they are a little tender. Uh, that little uh, roll pin that holds a little bevel gear in there, it will not it will not hold up to the impact. Um, so just use the drill, speed up and down. Yep. Uh, but no impact. After One that, thing, crank. before we walk away from here, I want to yeah. show people this. <laughs> Mr. Gary has done this correctly. Folks, if you're going to have your sawmill in a, you know, a stationary location, you really need to have 
some kind of wood structure that goes across and everything. And he's actually done even more because he also added this, looks like the rubber stripping there that will not move. Yeah, it's like a conveyor belt kind of stuff. Yep. Uh, so I, I screwed these down here so that it doesn't walk around. That is that is like critical because if you are putting a sawmill like these metal legs onto this concrete, the loading and unloading of logs, you can get your sawmill to move around a lot. If you're doing this on dirt, you can get a sawmill leg to dig in a little bit more and cause your uh, alignment and stuff to be off. This right here will ensure that your alignment stays true for a long period of time with use. Also point out that I always take these extra shims with Yes, me. exactly. And so you do travel a lot with your sawmill. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's a whole idea. That's, that's a lot. I, I do not travel, nor does my dad. However, if you're going to travel, uh, definitely have your stuff together before you get on the road. On the, on the very first time we took this out, I said, there's something you've got to change real quick. I wear contact lenses and I can't have the uh, sawdust blowing all over the place. So I... I got a hold of the nice people at, at Woodmiser. I left this, mm -hmm. and, and that's that's in honor of the Woodmiser. There you go. They're, they're helped, good folks too. They're all they're Sawyers. Help, help me out so well. uh, <laughs> and I like so, what you put on there. Yeah. So this is a timber miser. Timber miser. Yeah. That's how that is. But this flops on down, and uh, now I can put the uh, sawdust right down on the ground. It doesn't blow around. And, you know, it's bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I made up this set up here. It's made out of you know like. 12 gauge steel. Mm -hmm. uh, important thing, uh, these extra bolts you see down here are actually the safety uh, uh, stops. Oh, wow. That are, that are in here. Very nice. Yeah, those are uh, quarter inch bolts. And that right there will allow a lot more sawdust to go out. Oh, yeah. And get stuck yeah, in there. It, it doesn't clog it well, at, at all. Before you close that, what's all that stuff on there? Okay, so this is Dynamat. Um, this is a sound uh, uh, damp dampening material. And uh, this stuff is really kind of the difference between the Chevrolet and a Cadillac. Yeah. Um, Look at that. They put that into the floorboards and the door panels. You've done it up there, too. Yeah. You've done it everywhere. Yeah. So no more rattling and, and banging and, 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 and all that. I mean, and, folks, I will say I did hear him run the sawmill earlier. It is quiet. It is much quieter than mine. I'm going to have to do something like this. this is a... It's absolutely quiet. <laughs> so, yeah, this worked out really well. Put this back. And move around a little bit more. Oh, got you've got one other thing right oh, here. This. Um, I was told by uh, the timber folks, timber king folks, that uh, if I was using diesel, it was going to deteriorate my hoses and wiring and belts and all sorts of bad things are going to happen. Nah, I don't know about that. But I got this piece of what they call HydroTurf. It's available at, at uh, marine dealers or online. It's, it's kind of a, a rubberized material that they use for the floorboards. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got a 3M uh, adhesive on the back. Stick to about anything that's dry. Okay. Uh, just like that, that uh, Dynamat. It's, it's fun to work with. But I cover this down so now there's no sawdust that ever hits these hoses or wiring. Okay. That's awesome. It just that's a great ad. Yeah. And moving around. Uh, next thing. Almost all of our equipment has... Uh, onboard uh, uh, battery charger maintainers. Mm -hmm. So it's a great idea. Yeah. And anyone who's tried to start the 2220 and above during the winter time, the battery is kind of undersized. Not yeah. so much for the V1505D that's on the Timber King uh, 2020, but they use the same size battery group on the larger ones and it's kind of underpowered. So having something like that on there to get you through the winter is key. Yeah. Well, where I got on to using these. Is uh, basically on my lawn mowers and mm -hmm. that. Uh, I've got a, a bad boy mower, uh, you know, and they got the small battery. Seems like they're only good for about a year. Mm -hmm. You put one of these uh, on there and keep it plugged in. That little tiny uh, lawn mower battery lasts three years, and it's a maintainer. It, it it's only a, a 1.5 exactly. Amps. But it just does a, a, a nice job of keeping that. Battery and fine. you actually did take my advice on one thing too, and you did it uh, early on. Around this solenoid right here, there's a solenoid valve right here. You added the silicone grease or anything to not allow fine sawdust, such as cedar sawdust, to get in here. If you lose connection there, uh, it'll cause your yeah, computer sure. set works not to work as well. And by the way, um, that silicone on the outside, mm -hmm. not not jammed Correct. Out full. Um, that can sometimes be a problem when we're talking about millivolts, milliamps, and that sort of thing. So uh, the silicone is around the outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, next thing to point out here, I like to have a fuel pressure gauge. Um, That's very smart because I actually had an issue. Um, I wasn't getting the correct fuel flow 
to my engine, but having that right there would have really diagnosed the issue. Yeah. And Gary's been on me to get that done, and I just haven't done it yet. <laughs> uh, this one is is uh, actually oil filled. Mm -hmm. uh, so so be careful when you when you uh, specify one of these things. If you if you get one that's not oil filled, it's flop them all over the place, and then they would needle fall off. Okay. Uh, I don't think I even started this thing up for more than an hour or so before I ended up putting uh, uh, a uh, what I think is a proper fuel oil separator. I agree. Fuel water separator. I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, if you're going to run a piece of equipment that costs this much, this is a simple protection right well, here. A uh, diesel engine should, shouldn't have anything less than that. Exactly. In fact, your father's machine's got dual fuel. Yes, it does. Like yes, that. it does. Yeah. Very nice setup. Well, and the reason for that is that's electronic fuel injection. And its its requirements are much much finer um, and stricter mm -hmm. than the uh, mechanical Correct. injection pump, which is what we have here. It's a, a four cylinder uh, Kubota, the 1505 bulletproof engine. Yes, it is. And it's all mechanical. It's a fantastic engine. It, they they sold those things by the bazillions. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the <laughs> the standard uh, Timber King filter is <laughs> this. That's good for your lawnmower. It's not good for my. Eight thousand dollar diesel engine. Sorry. Actually, I think they're like twelve thousand now. Yeah. They're 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 expensive. Whatever they are. <laughs> so anyway, that uh, is that was replaced by this, and this now becomes a breather. Exactly. For my reservoirs, all the reservoirs on this machine have have uh, filters on them and breather hoses that go up to dry, uh, somewhat. Uh, clean areas and if you don't what you can actually have an issue with is with the diesel it's constantly using fuel but it's also yeah. returning fuel back yeah. you can actually cause this tank to kind of compress down and crunch down on you and that's not good on my 2000 mil it actually did that um, it wasn't too bad but you'd always take off the lid off the top and you'd see it pop back out but uh, just by having that breathe on there it completely removes that issue added a tachometer uh, I like gauges. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't? Yeah, I like <laughs> gauges. I'm not going to get out in the sun without an umbrella. Mm -hmm. So this is a standard uh, internet item. You know, they use them for tractors and other welding on welding. Yeah, you made a little here. bracket over here yeah. just to hold that. Yeah. But that's a very smart ad and everything. Now, do yeah. you have to take that down when you're traveling on the road? Oh, yeah, this comes off. I okay. put it on there for gotcha. you know, demonstration purposes. Uh, I'm always paranoid about getting rear-ended. Mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't leave Kansas City before... I added the 3M conspicuity tape. Um, I think I got to the first uh, first uh, uh, truck stop, stopped, and, and plastered <laughs> that all over the place. Awesome. Got a little uh, flag here. It's just zip tied on there. Just another little thing. This is a little fancier. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe a whole lot fancier. Uh, this is a Whelan uh, Class 1 uh, strobe. It strobes uh, uh, red. And... It's uh, set up with a timer from an outfit called the Timer Shop, and that comes pre-programmed with all sorts of different uh, flasher uh, patterns and all. Mm -hmm. And what basically happens is uh, when the truck is hooked up, I've got 12-volt power to the timer, uh, and I've also got the brake circuit, which triggers the timer. It stays hot all the time. When the brakes are applied, uh, the flasher, I've got it programmed to flash three times, or actually for three seconds, mm -hmm. and then go off. Uh, and uh, just to give people behind an extra little, little shot. And that's great, because I will say the, the most terrible terrible thing could ever happen is a someone ran to the back of this. This oh. is essentially the brains of everything. This is for starting your, your engine. This is for running the computers, all your hydraulics. If someone runs to the back of this, you're, you're in well, trouble. Well, look, <laughs> there's no such thing as a light rear end tap exactly that would, not on this not, yeah so that is i'm always nervous when i went to go to kansas city with my buddy jack and he drove there and i drove on the way back and we were driving through a rainstorm in st louis i was terrified someone's gonna run to the back of us i'm like oh brand new sawmill but yeah that is an awesome ad even just something as simple as a flag on there just adds yeah. some kind of warning that hey this extends further than the actual lights themselves the lights are easily viewable but well the other thing that that uh, you know, keep in mind is the lights are inset, you know, like three or four feet mm -hmm. from where big trouble is going to happen if someone taps you. All right, moving on along. Uh, this is a cool little deal. Everybody ought yep. to have this this thing from Cage Hill Sawyer. Yeah, that's Phone numbers on there. Mr. Uh, Steve down there in Tupelo, Mississippi. 
uh, met him a couple years back and we've been you know putting his product out there it's great it's a little cant scale it tells you hey if you want a, a 12 inch diameter or 12 inch cant excuse me squared up cant that means you need at least a 17 inch diameter log on your small end so great little scale to have on there there are many people that have been using this there's a formula you can use this but this is a magnetic piece right there easy to pop on there and contact uh, mr steve at 601 606-4907 and he's up there in the Tupelo, Mississippi area. I'm having customers refer to that all the time mm -hmm. because they'll show me a, a log, you know, it's like 12 inches and they say, well, you know, I want to get like a 10 inch uh, uh, board out of that, blah, blah, blah. I go, wait a minute. <laughs> Let's come over here and see what we can get out of a 12 inch diameter exactly. log. And by the way, that's that's on the on the small end. Exactly, on the small end. Okay. So 12 inch diameter, 8.5 is all you can get. Gonna, I'm not gonna get you a 10 inch board out of a 12 inch log. Yeah. Anyway, a couple more things in, in this area that I could point out. Because in, in South Carolina, I'm dealing with 100 degree days or I could be at, at uh, below uh, freezing. Uh, I've got a block heater that's been added to the uh, block and also a, a glue on uh, uh, heater yep. for the uh, hydraulic tank which is awesome on those really cold mornings yeah. i have that issue in wisconsin it takes me a long time of leaving the salma idle to warm up your hydraulic tank but having that heater there on the side yeah it just glues onto the side there it brings it up and very the, quick the two of them are into an extension here so you know if i'm going to be uh cutting early the next morning and you know 20 degree day or whatever Plug that in overnight, and I'm and I'm good to go. Ready to go. Be nice and toasty. Yeah, ready to go right off the get go. Okay. Uh, next, we're gonna we're gonna point out this this heavy duty fender that I put on there. But in conjunction with that fender, is a step that's been added. Which is the smartest thing you could literally do. Well, I like this. I've been uh, <laughs> working with construction uh, uh, equipment for like 40 years, and and there's various standards, and one of them that you don't uh, very uh, is that. If anybody's climbing on a machine, they have to have three points of contact, three points to hold uh, for getting up and down on a machine, and that's what we have here. Exactly. So now I can climb up on a machine, I can check the oil, I can get to the air cleaner, I can do all that sort of good stuff, and do it safely. Exactly. Uh, and so whenever I do this, I'm usually using this bar right here. Now this bar right here, if you get any kind of oil on there, there's no traction. Yeah, this is actually great. Th th these are great. The other thing is, that I've got two hand holds here. Yes. Otherwise, you're reaching the entire width there, and it's they're large. I mean, I've got big hands, but like that's that's a large you know yeah. steel tube to hold and, on to. And, and that's kind of a byproduct of something that was actually more pressing, but we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that uh, occurred to me uh, right off the the bat, and I guess probably learning how to run the sawmill, I broke a couple blades. Mm -hmm. And wow, when that happens with this machine, it sounds like an M80 went off inside the cab <laughs> of your pickup truck. Bang, like you never heard. And what I found out was, <laughs> where's that banging come from? It's actually the idler wheel hitting the shroud. And before it, it went and did that, I wanted to give it a little cushion, so I developed this little setup here. It's easy to do. It's just some conveyor belt uh, cut into squares and with a whole... Uh, you know, punch through there. And now, if this mechanism comes out with extreme amount of force mm -hmm. uh, when that blade breaks, because we're running like 1,500 PSI or more, or more or less, that thing comes out with enthusiasm, right? It Wham! does that. <laughs> and uh, uh, <laughs> so I wanted to cushion this. Uh, there was all sorts of reports of, of guys, you know, stripping, stripping out. out mm -hmm. and all that. Now, Timber King did go to an Acme thread. Correct. Which, for people that are not aware of it, it's a square cut thread, which gives it a lot of surface area, and it's made for uh, situations that require adjustment and, and a lot of stress. But anyway, that little bumper mechanism, which by the way, we, we got posted on the Timber King Correct. Uh, owner and, and user site, all the details are there. But also, let's talk about that uh, tensioner. Yeah, okay, so the tensioner, by the way, this is a standard uh, item from Timber King. It's a dual spring arrangement. And what that allows me to do is run up 1,500 or more uh, pounds of pressure uh, tension on the uh, on the blade, and not get into a coil bind exactly. scenario. Yep. So now uh, running that much um, tension, even though if I have a dip or or that blade does something crazy on me, 
the, these are not uh, locked up um, to where there isn't still a little bit of movement. Exactly. So if you're running an inch and a half blade or 55 thousandths blade that's inch and a quarter, this is kind of the setup you need. Yeah. I do run the 55 thousandths blades that are inch and a quarter on my sawmill. But as you said, I'm almost coil bound. I mean, there's very little room. I run them a little bit more than I typically, usually with the inch and a quarter blade, I run them around 1100 PSI. So when it's coil bound, there's no give. That's exactly right. No give whatsoever. Um, while we're here, I'll point out one of the very first additions we made uh, mm -hmm. to the mill. And I mean, this is like within the first few weeks. Uh, and based on what Thomas had done on, on his earlier mills, this is solenoid operator valve mm -hmm. for the uh, lube circuit. It goes down and, and moves the blade. And this is simple deal. This was from US Solid. They're available online. This is like 12 bucks. Yes, and they are, they are a good quality. Oh, yeah. Solid brass. This is made in the US. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. And it's been uh, super reliable. I just got it mounted un underneath the uh, tank here. They recommend that you put an inline filter ahead of it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that you don't get any impurities in there. And the combination of this, and then the next thing we'll talk about is Nita valve sight glass. Uh, I never touch these plastic parts any longer. I broke a couple of these. Mike Alexander and Timber King. He's referring to this valve up here. Yeah, he's nice enough to send me replacement parts and all yeah, that. They don't like cold weather either. But <laughs> I don't touch this. Mm -hmm. I stay away from that. Uh, this turns the uh, lube on and off religiously and instantaneously whenever I engage the clutch. Okay. Uh, it's a solenoid. Two wires, it's not polarity sensitive. One wire goes to ground, the other one goes to uh, your electric uh, uh, clutch. This uh, uh, Nita valve sight glass is a very fine control of the flow of your lubrication. Mm -hmm. But the idea here is now I know exactly what it's doing. Drip, drip, drip. Correct. I'll usually run um, one or two drips per second. If I get into something that's you know on the sketchy side, I can I can let it flow. Yep. Really, really pitchy pine is yeah. sketchy, folks. <laughs> yeah. So that is available from an outfit called Zorro.com. Uh, we posted their uh, contact info. Great little device. It's it's about eighty dollars, I think, um, and they discount them sometime. But this is a great combination, and we're Correct. going to show you the rest of it with uh, our little wiper arrangement. Oh, by the way, I like to see um, what that blade is doing, so I turn this 90 degrees. Now I can see my tachometer, my fuel pressure, operating pressures on the system, all from the operator station. Which is awesome. That's what you, sh you should see. So if, you, if, if you're running into a situation, if you see this number here start climbing, it means your blade's probably rising or falling. Probably rising, to tell you the truth. Um, but yeah, just keep, keeping an eye on your gauges, you know, it can help diagnose what the actual issues are. So... I didn't start off uh, with with uh, objectives at any rate uh, relative to all these different changes, but they're they're done for one or three uh, reasons or a combination uh, to improve the productivity of the machine, uh, enhance the long term reliability, hence these these different uh, like breathers and all, and also to enhance the safety as well, and uh, so addressing you know either one or a bunch of those three things is what the objective is. Uh, talk about the safety issue. Uh, we won't fire this up because it'll blind that camera, but I don't allow anybody when, when you know, we've got helpers here to uh, work in this area, stand in this area if the uh, blade is moving. Mm -hmm. So how do you tell if the blade is moving? You can hardly tell even yeah. from back it, Everything's so smooth and it can be, you can't hear it sometimes because of the tune of the engine. Yeah. So. I've had another wheel and strobe, but once again, this is a class one wheel and strobe. Yep. You can't stand to look at it. And now he's going to go ahead and uh, rev it up. And he's also got the clutch engaged. You can see that light flashing. So everyone knows, stay clear. Blade is in motion. Don't mess with anything. But there are no rattles or anything. Everything's nice and clean and, and quiet. Awesome. <laughs> and so the idea here is whenever that blade is running, just like the uh, electric solenoid for the lube, this is wired into the clutch circuit. If the clutch is going, the blade's going, mm -hmm. this is going. And that's great. That's a great way to protect yourself if you're running a business and everything, because you can say you're running a safe business for insurance purposes and everything. 
No one's allowed to operate, you know, near the exhaust portion. No one's allowed to operate where the yeah. lights are flashing. It keeps things safe, and no one, safety no is key. No one on that, on that uh, energy chain uh, side at all. Exactly. No reason. Yep. We, 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 we don't allow anybody that way. Um, you know, we've got the stops, the safety stops on, on the, uh, the chute there. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a blade go flying too far. Um, I have seen them get to the end of the chute and stop, but who knows where they go. Um, we, that's why that's on there. And by the way, I've got a, a document that we go through before we start uh, that ticks off different safety items. Yeah, the and, safety uh, checkoff sheet. Yeah, which, which includes, hey, everybody's got to read the, uh, the, the uh, uh, decals. And that is smart. When you're operating your business, you know, you can be shut down an instant for having an unsafe practice at your business. Even though we're LLC and that, that sort of thing, uh, you know, I've got full uh, $2 million liability uh, coverage and all that. But look, uh, our job is to keep people safe. We don't want anybody getting hurt whether we got insurance or not. Okay, so getting in uh, behind this cover a little bit more. Uh, of course, the Dynamat. <laughs> Which is awesome. I am, I, like that stuff. I am so impressed with this. I'm going to add this to my sawmill so they get back or something like yeah. it. This is Dynamat Extreme. Which, by the way, it's not, it's not cheap, but this was actually left over from a couple of vehicle restorations that I did. And I said, you know, I got a whole box of that stuff. I'll bet it will do a good job in uh, getting, getting rid of those It's amazing guys. how quiet this yeah. sawmill is. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, since we're in Columbia, South Carolina, and we get 100-degree days, and I might be out in the, in the bright sun, uh, none of the construction equipment that I worked on for over 40 years, none of it, uh, went out the door that didn't have a hydraulic cooler. And so... You could call that, you know, just a part of me uh, and, and what I'm used to. But from a practical point of view, um, if you do the arithmetic real, real quick, and I did, you know, some thermodynamic <laughs> kind of stuff way back in you know, 100 years ago in school. Um, on a 100 degree day with that black hydraulic tank, all these black hoses that, that don't do anything to dissipate heat, um, uh, if I'm in the middle of the day and just start up to saw, it's probably the coolant or the uh, hydraulic oil is probably starting at 120 degrees. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to go much over 140, so I added this cooler. Um, it's got a thermostat uh, set to 140. Mm -hmm. It'll start on at 140, or if I want to turn it on manually, I've got it wired in with a with a switch uh, set up parallel, so I can do a little uh, preemptive. Uh, that manifold, uh, it does get pretty hot. Oh, yes, it does. And what he's referring to, I'll show you real quick. This right here. So if you're running this sawmill and you put your hand here, you know that you've got hydraulic fluid flowing through either one of these manifolds, especially on this right side here. You can definitely feel it. Oh, one thing I didn't point out. <laughs> That's right. We haven't talked about this yet. Uh, this, is, this is a new ad. Yeah, this is, this is uh, you know, the Timber King guys don't much care for this. But <laughs> anyway, and I can understand their point. You know, we'll they, they want to keep the operator back at the controls. But, you know, I go out at 7 in the morning, get fired up, and I'm, I'm shutting down at 5 or 6. It's a drag holding that lever mm -hmm. down all day. Can't take a bite of a sandwich. You know, you can't open up, you know, a soda or whatever. Um, I said it would be a lot more convenient if, if when I'm running that carriage forward, if I set that in a forward uh, position and then and advance my speed like that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I've got some freedom. I also found that when I'm making a long cut, it does improve my perspective a good bit to see what that blade's doing if I'm off to the side and I can get on down like that. So, so what he has here, folks, this is a detent valve yeah, right, a detent here, right here, which is absolutely awesome. Yeah, it's this little item here. Yep. And that's a, that's a standard uh, item available for about any hydraulic manifold. Yeah. It took me a good bit of research to finally get people to... You know, get me the part number and all that kind of stuff, but you know. That is really cool. Does yeah. it detent only in one direction or both directions? Yeah, it's a detent. Only okay, only the forward direction. Okay. Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, no, you wouldn't want it to reverse. <laughs> no, it's it's spring loaded in in that direction, but. That is awesome. I know what, I know some of my buddies who uh, strap on a bungee cord to somewhere else and hold that. Yeah. Well, I I I asked the question online, you know, on the site, who's who's come up with anything like that? Oh man. Uh, it came from uh, bungee cords to an exotic toggle arrangement that the guy had made up. Man, very, very yeah. But again, it's just a detent little kit right there. Yeah. So 
all it is is a longer piece. How long did that take you to install? Uh, five minutes. There you go. Yeah. There's a little bit of a trek to it. But there is, but yeah, any rate, it's not that, it's not too no, difficult. It, it, that's a standard deal. <laughs> okay. So we digress. Yeah. So anyway, but, but that's, that's been very important for me. So one thing, with this cooler he added to the hydraulic cooler, he didn't just add it on there and slap it on there with some nuts and bolts. No, it's got uh, rubber mounts and everything, shock absorber mounts, which is great. Yeah. Again, improving the reliability and maintainability of the machine and ensuring that this machine lasts a lifetime. Because these machines, these are built like a tank, and they will last a lifetime. Well, I, I absolutely love this machine. I think it's just every, every day I get around this machine, I, I discover things that are even and, more, more cool. And like I said, he's in the same camp that I am. The Timmer King 2020 with the diesel is the best hydraulic sawmill, portable sawmill on the market, hands down. I don't know of anything that – there are mills that come close, but this thing has pretty much everything we want. you got the direct hydraulics, all sorts of stuff. But you can yeah. check out my other videos on that. This is literally yours and my both opinion. This is the greatest sawmill well, here, on the market. Here's for, the thing. Uh, I know how to work a volt ohm meter. Mm -hmm. you know, I could recite <laughs> Ohm's law, you know, backwards and forwards three different ways, but I don't like to. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I can figure out direct acting hydraulics. I can run a three quarter inch open end wrench. Exactly. And tighten a hose if I have. That's to. exactly right. Uh, electronics. Keep it simple, stupid. Simple. <laughs> and there's nothing like this machine. Uh, oh, and don't even get me started on the twin flow hydraulics, you know, that you get when you go to the 2020 uh, and, and above. Yes. It's fantastic. But that's a whole different subject. And we'll show that here in just a second. But yes, yeah. the twin flow, like there's there's two pumps up there off yeah. of one shaft or anything. Yeah. It allows you two operations. you got two valve body there. You can do operations at the same time, yeah, which is key. It's twin uh, five swivel manifolds. Mm -hmm. One uh, works some of the controls the other works the other and you can work them simultaneously yeah. it's it's, it's the best okay so at any rate uh one of the things that occurred to me uh splashing all that lubrication onto the blade uh was getting a lot of buildup over here uh and and actually I'm doing some research got on the cook site and they were using a felt wiper mm -hmm. and i said you know that makes a whole lot of sense instead of just splashing that uh, lubrication on there willy-nilly uh, let's see if we could come up with some type of wiper arrangement where we got a lot more control. And so uh, after about a half a dozen different versions, I came up with this little little device here. And it is very simple to install. In fact, I have one of your prototypes or anything. Yeah. I've been using it now for eight months, and I've got nothing but great things to say about it. It takes one, drill one bolt. Literally, one bolt. One bolt. One bolt. <laughs> one bolt. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the... Uh, the one that, that Cook sells, they, they got a little bracket and they say, oh, you can bolt it on or you can weld it on. I don't know exactly how that would work. And it's expensive for Cook's yeah. too. <laughs> but this one just bolts on right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we use the regular uh, hose from Timber King or, or some facsimile mm -hmm. and just drip this on down. Now, there's a little bit of, of design and engineering work on this thing. It's got a precise fit and it just pushes on down before you start up, push the, uh, the, the felt on down yep. so it's in contact with the blade. And that and, felt there, that's heavy-duty felt. Oh, yeah, yeah. This and is, that comes with it, too? Yeah. Okay. I, I saw these are $65 a piece, and it comes with two felts. Mm -hmm. I've never worn a felt out yet in I, $200. Yeah, I haven't either. So I don't know how long it last. Um, I know the ones that we had in, like on our Cooks one, it had been on there for years and years. Yeah. A little bit of wear and tear, but, I mean, it's still operating. But now, here, here's the thing. The combination of the electric solenoid and the sight glass mm -hmm. and this little wiper, that's probably 1,500 board feet right there. Yeah. You don't use much. You don't have to use much. Hardly. Yep. So I'm using diesel. I, I like the BioLib 210. You're using BioLib GP. Correct. Uh, which I tested, I think, five or six different uh, versions of BioLib. And uh, the GP and the 210 in my opinion worked as good as diesel exactly no i agree the only thing that i like about the gp over diesel I, there's many i mean it's it doesn't smell like diesel yeah. that that was my only complaint with running diesel is it would smell everything would smell like diesel with the BioLube gp it, it doesn't smell like that now there is one other thing uh, we didn't really talk about it um the cutout that you have in your oh, yellow yeah. portion here okay so that does a couple things let me yeah he's gonna move that over real quick 
And what we're talking about is there's a cutout right here. Now you do not have to add this cutout when you do this modification. I don't have that, but I will tell you if you take this portion of the yellow piece out, go from underneath there, if you take that cutout right there, you won't really get any sawdust buildup at all. Yeah, pretty much zero. I mean, it, it, this machine stays super clean, but... Yeah. Uh, and it, it, it depends, you know, like I tell people, like the head goes, you know, your mileage may vary. But it's <laughs> not unusual to be cutting all day long and the rollers look like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's a great ad. I, I've run a felt wiper system on our MP32 that we had for a while and everything. My dad said that's the greatest uh, system there is. And now we have one for Timber King. Yeah. So if you go through, Gary, now you've had this, you sent this out to a guy with a 1600 uh, it, it'll go on all of all of the Timber Kings as long as it has the U-shaped yellow guard. Now, okay. Uh, in the spring of this year, Timber King changed the design and now it's only got one flange. So I, I'm working on, I need to get with a guy up in, in uh, uh, upstate here who's got the new one and I'll, I'll get I'll get it developed for the uh, okay. the current machine. But as long as you got the U-shaped guard on there, which is like about everything. That's pretty much all of them, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> then it'll fit. Okay. And it, and it bolts right on. Uh, if you got uh, inch and a half blades, I have to take a little bit off the back side so this shifts back a little bit. It's no big deal. All right, what are we missing here? So the fenders, we, we, oh. we started to talk about the fenders, yeah. and also you have a, an additional axle that I do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, I wish Timber King would, would have a list of all their options. That's easily, you know. They, they, they do have some options, and the... Uh, the, the uh, tandem axle was one of them, and when I found out that they had that available for the 2020, well, then it's it's not even a choice. Yeah, if, if you're going to be traveling, if you're going to be on the road, you know, a person cutting wood and everything, it only makes sense to have a tandem axle. Yeah. If you have a blowout, one axle is plenty on this sawmill, but if you have a blowout, you've got the security. If you're on a single axle and you have a blowout, you're in a, that's a bad day. Yeah, so next, what is this all about? Well... On one of the first jobs that we were doing, um, because of the size of the lumber that guy was looking for, all he wanted was six by six, 16s and, 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 and bigger. Uh, our helpers were having one heck of a time getting control of the uh, material coming off. And in that one job, we essentially destroyed the standard fender. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, um, once, once the guys were, were lifting or moving, the material off the bunks and, and and grabbed it well you better be holding on because there's nothing over here and so the combination of having that fender uh, destroyed and uh, and the and the material handling again the safety aspect mm -hmm. uh, from now on when I, I'm out on the job I tell people if helpers look there's absolutely nothing on this side of the machine that you will hurt if you're dealing with this uh, a slab or you're dealing with a you know six by six something pretty heavy, if you happen to slip or or uh, maybe uh, you lose grip, let it go yeah. and get away because that fender can handle it. There's nothing that this fender can't handle. And in conjunction with that fender, you also added. This yes, little plate right here, yes. which goes right on to if you were going to extend out your uh, log loaders and everything. Yeah. Take a look at that. That's pretty cool. Yep. That is pretty cool. So, so now it slides right off the bunk, and uh, and the guy can now grab it on both ends and uh, keep it under control. And here's another thing. I'm going to step back over here, and you can see all the markings on his sawmill. So you said you put a center line on there. Yep. So if someone's going to load stuff on there or whatnot, you've got a center line. But also you have other numbers on there. So if you want an eight-foot log, so we've gone over this before. You want your, you got your three bunks here. You got your three log stops, excuse me. Um, and you get your log turner here. If you're going to run an eight-foot log, you need to make sure that you cover this log stop all the way through this log stop. And you've got that set up where an eight-foot log, the end of an eight-foot log should be about this location right here. That's awesome. And you've got a 12 foot, a 14 foot, a 16 foot. It all makes sense because you also have it where it's placed on a bunk. So you're not going to have the extended, the, the most extreme of the log uh, unsupported. It's going to be fully supported on a bunk. That is smart, folks. That is really smart. The, uh, the center line becomes, especially with a shorter log, the center mm -hmm. line becomes uh, the most important because, it's, well, at least the center line I've got marked uh, 
course corresponds with the uh, the log turner. Exactly. Um, if you're gonna turn a log, yeah. you gotta have you gotta have that. You yeah. gotta have it on where it's gonna be touching at least these two right here or all three of these. Yeah, and if if you if you get it uh, off to one side or the other, as the log turner comes up, it'll cant that log. Yes, it will. It on down, it, it, it won't work. So you want generally the center of the log uh, at the uh, log turner. And another thing, just since I can see it from this location, again, safety of your equipment, safety of personnel, but also you can see he's got his log stop as well as his log dog tipped with yellow paint. So if you're in the yellow, that's a bad zone to be in. <laughs> okay, so what are some of the next things I might do? So, well, actually, let me talk about little things that you've done around here that make this, you know, a... I guess a, a well-functioning machine. You don't have any of those uh, quick-release pins. No. You've changed out everything with nice cotter no. pins. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Here's an example right here. So all throughout, you'll find cotter pins and stuff like that. Everywhere where there is a... Like these, these I can understand for travel and stuff yeah. like that. But it's crazy, but Timber King had these everywhere. Yes. And you so you can see a yeah. cotter pin there. That's That's a smart... That's a smart idea. You don't have to worry about anything backing out because on my dad's sawmill, we actually had the pin right here that lifts up the tow boards. One of those came out, and then there was somewhere else. Just just from vibration, movement of stuff, it's going to work its way out. Well, here's well, the thing. I, I really should win the lottery because, <laughs> because I've knocked at least a half a dozen of these off of the pins by having uh, bark fall on them, by chunks falling on mm -hmm. them, uh, 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 you name it. And I'm going... How did that happen? Well, it's not going to happen anymore because all of these, except the ones that I have to have for mobility, have been replaced by cotter pins. And I get it. Hey, Timber King guys, uh, at the assembly, it's a whole lot faster to just put that pin in there. But uh, you know, for what I'm doing, uh, I, I can't, I can't afford to have one of these pins come come off. Exactly. You know, and I'm on a traveling on the road or and, at the job site. Exactly. And here's the thing, you know, something like that happens. Sorry, we're done for the day. I don't have a replacement pin. Uh, but I was going to get on to my next couple projects. Yeah. I've got a few few other things in mind. Next time you see this machine, it's going to have a cookie cutter uh, built into it. Um, called Mike Alexander the other day, and I got another bunk coming. We're going to add a bunk in here. And then, unlike the, uh, the Wood Miser version, my cookie cutter attachment is going to be on here all the time. Correct. Uh, it'll be basically like a platform uh, with jaws that will uh, insert down here and one that'll, that'll clamp onto here. Gotcha. And that's great for cookies or even just those small logs. Yeah. You get some small logs. These bunks currently are three feet apart, so yeah. if you split the difference there, you're a foot and a half apart. Yeah, so that's, that's going to be welded on here probably in the next week or so. Awesome. And then I'll come up with a, a cookie cutter arrangement. Uh, another thing I've, I've been taking to... I've, Normally go out on jobs with a four foot level, and I found that um, bringing a six foot um, level uh, works out a lot better because I can engage uh, three of the bunks exactly. at one time and get this thing just perfect. Yeah, uh, which is another reason why you, you want to have these fine fine uh, adjust jacks. Exactly. Uh, you know, which is not standard on everybody's machine. Well. Hey, all these changes and all these upgrades I've made to the machine, it, it's not to diminish in any way, shape, or form what, what Timber King does. I couldn't be happier with what they do. Uh, they could take it to another level. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's... This could be the Gary edition. I'm telling you what, <laughs> there, there could be profit uh, in, in some of these changes, but hey, I only got so much I can do. But, <laughs> Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. Well, I, I am very blessed to have come up here. I've been working, like I said, down in Florida quite a bit on and off the past two months. And I had a weekend free. I said, let's just go ahead and do a five-hour drive north. Why not? So yeah. we came up here, got to see this awesome setup. And I, I didn't really show this, but, I mean, he's also got a fantastic building. I mean, this building here, I remember watching on the, uh, the Timber, Timber King group there as you yeah. built this thing. Very impressed with the setup. Concrete slab. I mean, literally... You have the sawmill and the setup to last a lifetime. This is awesome. Well, I'd like to put a, a 
room out to the side. Okay. Kind of, kind of like you do, where I could have some slabs on yes. display. And yes. Get them out of the way. Yeah, I always tend to do either the front side or the back side. I'll do a bump out, and I actually I store my tractor on on one of them too. But this is a great design. I I actually might do something like this at my next property uh, when we move back to Tennessee and everything. Yeah, that's most of that's cut with that mill. Mm -hmm, exactly. By the way, I might mention this is this is the whole thing is sort of an exercise in, in what business guys would call vertical integration, <laughs> uh, because my son has the uh, Sight Ranger Tree Service. Yes, and uh, he cuts the trees down. He specializes in the high tech stuff that has to be rigged. Uh, he climbs most of the stuff, uh, and uh, very technical type type operations and specializes in some of the high-end neighborhoods around here yeah, yeah. so uh, wh what areas does he cover like uh, mostly around lake murray okay uh, uh, so just is, outside of uh, just outside of columbia south carolina and there you Nismo, go lexington that sort of thing so we work around that but we've got a lot of aged uh, uh <laughs> neighbor neighborhoods here where you know oh honey don't cut that tree down mm -hmm. that's what you said 20 years ago <laughs> now it's a hazard exactly over about ready to destroy the house so that's what he specializes in and then i come behind him with a with a uh, uh carlton 7015 stump grinder on in that thing my son he's an ex-army ranger he thinks it's boring <laughs> <laughs> he likes the excitement <laughs> uh, and then of course as he got into that he's saying dad ah i'm having to pay to get rid of all these logs I, set, I, I have to pay this guy that runs them into a big chipper, makes them into mulch, and s sells them you know, back to customers in, in mulch form. We need a sawmill. And, of course, he's, he's got to have a shop and a garage and mm -hmm. build a new house and all that kind of stuff. So now i got more logs than I need. Exactly. And, but the good part is we only go for the choice stuff. That's exactly right. The butt ends, everything's got to be concentric, nice tight rings, which, by the way, Around Lake Murray, with the wind that we've got, those big tall pines uh, have to have to deal with all that stress. Those those growth rings are like a thirty second of an inch apart. And man, let me tell you, when that when that uh, yellow pine hardens up, you can't drive a nail. <laughs> That's true. So you heard it first, folks. I mean, you heard it right here. The Timber King 2020, this is a great addition to your business oh, plan and everything. So you, you can do everything. You can do removal of trees, yep. grinding of stumps, cutting up into lumber. Yep. That's the full package right there. Yep. Next thing you need to do is woodworking shop. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. You can't expend your, do, do spread yourself too thin. Hey, who was that dirty Harry? He says, get, you know, man has to know his limits. Exactly, exactly. So this is awesome, though. But I do appreciate coming out here and taking a look at this. This is, a, I mean, literally the best 2020 setup that I've seen anywhere. And I, I've done a few modifications. Yeah. I, 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 I want to do more. I just haven't had time. So. <laughs> well, you know, I've got the gear to do it. Plasma cutters and MIG welders and TIG welders and, you know, all sorts of stuff. And that, that's, that's from an earlier life. So, exactly. You know, this a lot of the stuff that I did, you know, what cost, you know, uh, average guy thousands of dollars. Um, so. All right, sir. Well, I appreciate you letting us yeah. come out here and take a look at this. And, folks, if you like this, please like, subscribe, and check out the channel for more. We'll yeah. see you around. Thanks. Yeah.